Y'all ready to worship? Woo, yeah. I'm gonna worship today. Come on. It's good to see everybody fellowshipping in, in, in the house of the Lord. I love Amen. it. How are we doing, chap? We ready? Yeah. All right, let's do it. We're going to start with a little prayer. Father God, we just thank you so much for waking us up this morning. Thank you for full bellies. Woo, thank you, Lord Jesus. Biscuits and gravy. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just thank you for brothers, men of faith, who are walking this walk with me, Lord Jesus, that are happy to see me. That's a, that's a new one. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for just this program that you set up to, today, this, this, uh, this order of events with these brothers. Brother Travis ready to get his message. We just, we just thank you for his faithfulness. We know he's been studying and preparing his word. We just thank you for all the brothers here that come from all over the community. They come from different towns, different cities. Just to be here in the fellowship with you and just to love on you, Lord Jesus. To love on the brothers. Oh, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for being in this house. We thank you for being in this place. We thank you for your, your blood on the cross. And we're just going to celebrate you, Lord celebrate how good you are. When I 
I'm dead and I believe I'll see you do it again You made a way when there was no way And I believe I'll see you do Your it promise, again no Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hand. This is my confidence. You've never failed. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. And I never will forget. You've never failed me yet. And I never will forget. been there Lord Jesus you've always been there never failed even when I was stuck in my mess even when I thought I was doing the best I could <laughs> you were always there Lord Jesus thank you we just praise you Lord for being who you are and we're going to sing some things right now in the name of Jesus and you've given us authority here on earth Lord Jesus we just want to speak these things to life by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name, we just want to just stand on your promises. Stand on your record. Infinity to zero, you've never lost, Lord Jesus. Always there. We're going to stand on your record today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. flows in me by his stripes I am healed you poured your heart into mine and so I worship and bring you praise in Jesus name all my worries will be cast away in Jesus name oh God never be the same in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I claim the blood. In Jesus' name, I speak out peace. In Jesus' name, I am delivered. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, all my worries will be casted away. In Jesus' name, oh God, never be the same. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, all my worries will Still away in Jesus' name, oh God, never be the same. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, so I lift my hands and give you praise, glory to the one who saves. I raise my voice aloud and sing forever reigns, forever reigns. So I lift my hands and give you praise, glory to the one who saves. I raise my voice aloud and sing. 
It's your breath in our lungs. In our 
praise. Come on. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All right, let's hear a shout this time. Come on. And in all the earth will shout your praise. Teach my song to 
cries to you when temptation comes my way and when I cannot stand up And when I cannot stand, I fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. I need you, Jesus. Oh, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour. Praise God. They don't, they, don't even, they don't even go to this church. <laughs> That's what men's ministry should be about. It doesn't amount what church you attend. It's about being the church. Amen? Amen. You know, so I appreciate uh, Stephen and, and, his, and his guys. You know, in that third song, that was not anything you've probably heard on the radio. See that young man that was playing the keyboard? Stand up. <laughs> you know, you give honor to honor is due. And he wrote that song. It was a great song. I like that. You, you're learning that song, aren't you, Steve? Okay. 
I like it. That's you know that's great. But you know I also while I'm up here, before Travis comes, I'd like to say thank you to all of my helpers that come. You know because I can't do this by myself. So all of you that that helped me stand up. All of you that helped stand up. Oh, that are in here. Oh, this Travis. There's one there. Oh, there's some that's somewhere else. But anyway, there's more of them than that. So. No, some of them are still in there cleaning up. To, you know, and those are the ones that prepared our breakfast this morning and tried to get it ready. I th uh, and I really want to tell you, I thank them. I appreciate them coming. Uh, Pedro and Rudy come all the way from Hanford. Amen. You know, Rudy's usually at work in somewhere up in around Tahoe right now. He's been up in San Francisco, but he, he had a time off, and, and his fa Pedro, who's his father in law, brought him with us. You know, I've known Rudy for, man. 30, 40 years now. Back when, when we didn't know the Lord. Well, a long time ago. But thank God we're now there. So anyway, I want to bring Travis up. And then I want to bring Robert. Give a round of applause for Jesus one time, amen? All right. All right. You know, it's, it's beautiful to see the body of Christ together, you know, in one accord, one mind, one body, amen? It's beautiful. It's a masterpiece, and we're here to receive the master's peace. So, you know what? We're here to hear from the prince of peace, Lord, amen? So right now, in the name of Jesus. I just pray, Lord, that my brother puts on the helmet of Christ, Lord. I mean, he puts on the mind of Christ, Lord. The mind of Christ is not distracted. It's not fearful. It's not anxious, Lord. Amen. And, Lord, we just pray for that hot, fresh manna straight from the throne today, Lord. Amen. And, and Lord, we pray for that word that's going to edify, that's going to build us, Lord. Amen. We're, we're praying for a rhema word, a right now word, Lord. Amen. So, Lord, I just pray. I come against all distractions. I come against principalities. I come against all these things, the prince of the power of the air, Lord. Amen. We bind it up. We break it. We reject it. We renounce it right now in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of of heaven in the name of Jesus I pray that you that you fill this sanctuary with your tangible presence Lord amen and Lord I just want to thank you for what you're about to do through my through the willing vessel brother Travis Lord amen because this cup is filled and it's overflowing and we're about to receive so we just thank you and praise you in the mighty name of Jesus we pray amen I knew I picked the right guy for that <coughs> Travis. <laughs> Y'all didn't know. Um, I'd like to give a little bit of my testimony before I start. Um, no. <laughs> um, not just about, you know, who I was, because, you know, we all, we all were something. We all were pretty bad people, but, uh, you know, I, w I was a meth addict for 24 years, it, 24 years as of yesterday. It would have been. That's how. That's how long ago I, I started meth. Um, and yes, God brought me out of that. God brought me through. God. God restored my family. Um, but as wonderful as all those huge things are, I want to talk about what God's done in the last year and a half, because that's what's really important to me. Um, you know, as we die to ourselves, as we stop fulfilling the desires of this flesh. And I mean that in, like, just the small things, not even drug use, like, just making ourselves feel better with the thoughts, the feelings, the things we do, say, and, and, and we give God the reins, and we allow him to really change who we are, not just in our heart, but in our, we're, we're renewing our mind with the word of God. We're allowing him to change us, and what God's doing has allowed me to stand up here in front of you guys today. I served God for about four years um, fervently, but my walk with him, I, I walked away. I went back to meth. I was, that's a long story, but um, this last year and a half is like concentrated, and that's, that's, that's because God is doing something in me, and I'm, I'm, I'm giving him the reins, and that's kind of what I want to talk about today is what are we giving him? 
you know, you and I, we look at God and uh, we look at the New Testament. We look at, uh, you know, the grace and the mercy. And I just, I just want to, I'm just going to bring this up. I just want to point this out because I, even for me, I forget who we're talking about. You know, yes, we've seen Jesus, we've seen the Father, but I want to I bring this to our remembrance. And we were talking about this last week, Juan. Um, you know, he's the maker of all things. You know, yes, he died for our sins, yes, but he's, his presence can be scary. It can be weighty. And I want to bring up uh, Exodus 33, 17 through 23. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, please show me your glory. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will pro proclaim the name of, of, the, of the Lord before you. I will, I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. God put him in the cleft of the rock. God is giant. He's huge. He's, who can fathom him? Uh, also, uh, Juan pointed this out, Isaiah 40, verses 11 through 18. He will feed his flock like a shepherd, and he will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, measured heaven with a span, and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. Weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance, who has directed the spirit of the Lord, or, or as his counselor has taught him. With whom did he take counsel, and who instructed him and taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket, and are accounted as the small dust on the balance. Look, he lifts up the isles as a very little thing, and Lebanon is not sufficient to burn nor its be sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. To whom then will you liken God, or what likeness will you compare to him? That's who we serve. That's who picked us up out of the muck and the mire. That's who wants to have communion with us. That's who wants to change us so that we can become who he's called us to become. <clears throat> yeah, Israel feared the presence of God so much that they refused to go to the mountaintop. They, 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 they saw the, what came before the presence of God and got so scared they refused. They, they refused. They weren't, they weren't having it. God wanted communion with Israel. If they had done what he asked, the Bible would read a lot differently. But just like us, Israel didn't want that. Exodus 20, 18 through 19. Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. Then they said to Moses, you speak with us and we will hear but let not God speak with us lest we die. You hear from God, we'll hear from you. I've been guilty of this so many times. Feeding off someone else's anointing, 
feeding off someone else's relationship with God instead of going into the throne room for myself. I mean, how, 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 how much more does he want from us and how little do we give him? If we really, if we really believe what this word says, if we really believe who God is, why are we holding back from him? Who are we? Who are we to keep ourselves from him so we can enjoy the things of this world so that we can, we can, we can soothe this flesh with, with what it wants, laying back, watching TV. I mean, who are we? But we do it. Let's not kid ourselves. We do that. I do it more than anybody. I mean, obviously. I mean, this body is testifying against me right now. I mean, obviously, I am, I'm soothing this flesh, but we all do. What should have taken a couple weeks to journey from Egypt to the promised land took 38 years. 38 years. I mean, I don't know how long it would have taken to defeat all of those tribes, but the, the trip should have taken like 11 days. That's how far the distance was, and it took them 38 years. Some of us have been in a wilderness and a desert for what seems like forever. I have. And it seems like right when I come out of one, I go right back into one. But why is that? Am I, am I, am I, am I letting God teach me? Am I learning or am I murmuring and complaining? Am I doing exactly what Israel did in the desert? Or worse? Just like Israel, we dictate how long we are in these wildernesses by how much we murmur, complain, and refuse to comply with what God is asking of us. Either to lay certain things down or to begin, begin picking things up, doing things for him. Are we going to be obedient and allow God to mold us, shape us into who he wants us to be? Or are we going to be stiff-necked like Israel and wander in circles for years and years when we could be stepping into our destiny here and now? God is calling us to a deeper connection to speak with us on a level you and I have never even comprehended. We've read about it, but we don't really grasp it. You know, we have work to do. We have families to support and to raise things that need our attention, but what percent of our lives are given to him? What are we really giving him? I want to go over to uh, Mark 5:25. It'll be uh, 25 through 34. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of blood within her dried up, and, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in him, in himself, that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitudes thronging you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. There was people all around Jesus, all around him. Thousands of people all around him. But one person got in there, got close. drew near you know everybody else is there for what they can get you know 
for, for, for what they can hear, what can make them feel better. This woman's there for healing, and she knew the only way to get it would be to get in close. The closer we get to Jesus, the more we can be healed and changed. Uh, John 15, 5 through 8. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. When we abide in his presence, we bear much fruit. How much fruit are we bearing? That's the measuring stick to how closely we're following after him. Are we abiding in him? Or are we just coming for a little nutrient, little little trickle, and then going back? It's like, it's like we're plants with scuba masks on. Like, you've got to stay in the, in the vine. But we're coming, we're getting what we can get. And going back out into the world. And when we get drained, we come back and get what we can get. And going back out, getting drained. And that's not what he's calling us to do. And I'm guilty of this. I'm very guilty of this. Everything I'm talking about today comes from where I'm at. <clears throat> we, uh, when we really have been in his presence, there's evidence of it. There's evidence all over us. I want to go to Exodus 34. 29 through 35. Now it was so when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and the two tablets of testimony were in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mountain, that Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Then Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came near, and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with him, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out and would come out and speak to the children of Israel whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. How shiny are you guys? You know? Uh, how, how shiny are we? Are, I, 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 for myself, I look like the world most of the time. You know, I was driving one time, and somebody from my congregation, my, my last church, said they saw me driving, and they said I looked so angry. They said I was just scowling, and I said, really? I don't remember being in a bad mood. <laughs> but that's, that's, you know, that's where, my, that's where I rest at. There's, whatever's in here, that's where I rest at. And, and, and that, that's up to us to change that. That's nobody else's business. That's between us and God. Who are we? Who are we? God is calling us to this deeper thing. And that's where change comes. I don't know about you guys, but I hate myself. When I'm alone with my, <laughs> part of my testimony, I, I tried to kill myself multiple times. I wanted to get away from me. And what God is doing within me, even though I'm not in the middle of his presence like I should be, even though I'm on the outskirts of it, even though I'm, I'm dancing with it, that little bit has changed me enough to where I can stand to look in the mirror. I can stand to be me. When we have really been in his presence, there's evidence. Are we shining with the glory of, of being in his presence so that others around us are drawn there as well, wanting what we have? You and I have a destiny. And not just our eternal one, but one here and now in this life. Callings, gifts given for kingdom work. God is trying to train us to be obedient and stay in his presence and in tune with his spirit so that we can reach those around us. 
I can't reach who you can, and you can't reach who I can, and that is why we all need to submit to his will and authority in our walk and in our life. We must enter and remain in his presence to be lights to this dark world. Will you commit today to giving him more of yourself and time and your focus? That's all I got, guys. Short and sweet, brother. <laughs> hey, you know, I think he said that's all he's got. You know, I think that was more than enough. Yeah. You know, for his first time, I said, wow. Wow. I'm proud of Travis. Travis, glad to call you friend. Glad to call you brother. You know, that's really good, too. His dad is here. He came to honor his son. You know, that's what God did. He honors his children. Amen. He honors us. He gives us all the things that Travis talked about, even though we don't always deserve it, and most of the time we don't. Yeah. You know, I, sometimes I hate to think that the, the best that I am is worthless. Just trash. Yeah. Co you know, comparing to God's glory. But you know, one day, one day, it's going to be different. Not only will we see him, we will be more like him. And we won't have to put up with us overeating and all the other things that we do that we shouldn't be doing. Anyway. Pastor Frank, could you come? Can I bother you? You know, this is a prophet, Pastor Frank Flores. You've probably seen him here. He spoke here before. And I'm going to have him... Close this out in prayer when we don't, and if anyone wants prayer or would like to come up, we have a few others, Juan and a few others can come and we'll pray with you. Because, you know, we don't want to leave you here. We're thinking, nobody prayed for me. They didn't let me come up and, and, and say, I need Jesus that, that Travis talked about. We don't want to do that. Because, you know, sometimes we may, we may have been walking with the Lord and we may have been coming to these, all these meetings, maybe going to other ones. But we're still struggling with some things in our life that we haven't been able to lay down. And that's what we're here for more than anything else, just, just to worship God, to hear his word, and to fellowship together, but to pray for one another. Because that's where our strength is. That's where our strength is. Thank you, Bill. You know, I was thinking about father and son. I was thinking about when God told uh, Noah, he said, I need you to construct me a boat because I'm about to do away with the world because of sin. It had come to the place where God couldn't take it anymore. You know, God is gracious and full of love, but he had to bring judgment. We forget that sometimes he's full of grace and full of mercy, but man, he's the righteous judge. So he had to wipe out the earth and start over again. And when he told Noah, Noah was faithful for all these years building that boat. Didn't say that his kids were faithful. He said he was faithful. And so does God concerned about the family? You better believe it. He wants to have a covenant not just with you but with your family. So, Travis, you staying up, standing up here and preaching, your father right there, there's a covenant between father and son. Amen? It's powerful powerful and all of us you know we have dads and, and we have you know sons and God's going to cover everything he's not he's not going to leave anything undone fellas really what he started he's going to finish and I was just on the phone with your pastor I said where you at man I come to see you he said I'm in LA I know you're in LA because you're not here <laughs> first thing he asked me How's, how's the men's group? I said, it's packed out. Good! You know how I am? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? I said, you're in good hands. I said, listen, yeah, and the women are over there at my house right now having fellowship. I said, boy, you guys can be gone, and the church still going strong. Amen? <laughs> Why? 
Because this is what your shepherds have built. You see, Henry and Eva, they love you. The love just flows out of them. Right? And then you have a, a leader like Bill who understood, received that love. Now he's walking in his calling. And now he's up there and you're seeing Bill. And Travis, you get up there for the first time and you preach. Guess what? This thing is contagious. It really is, man. The love never fails. So this is why I'll make a trip all the way to Clovis, California, over here to see just the, the miraculous that's happening here. In, and I, we've called it out along with other prophets from different regions that know what's going on here in Visalia. You guys are not just a local church. You're a regional church. You're going to hit all this area. Oak trees. Sacred to this land. Well, you guys are sacred to God. Do you believe that? Turn to your neighbor and say, man, we're just getting started. Well, we're just getting, go to the other side and say, we're just getting started. We're just getting started, man. Hallelujah. But for the elders that, have, uh, that uh, held their ground until the right shepherds came, I commend you, Dave, and all the Bob, and all those that were a part of just holding on to this local church call, the Life Church Now. You guys are the real pillars. You guys are the real faithful ones. Because you could have abandoned any time and lived. And then this wouldn't be happening today. I commend you for that. Amen. Came close. So, I guess we're going to have a little music. Altar call. Is that what you're looking for now? A little prayer? Why don't we stand up, eh? Where's the worship team? Yay, there's Steve. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here they come. Even a set of congas over there. I'm jealous. Look at that. Well, thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands, and as they play, listen, you know, Travis says something. Just don't come for a little trickle. Come for a miracle. Come for a miracle. Just don't come for a little trickle, a little bit of uh, biscuits and gravy and a little bit of eggs here and a little bit, little bit yeah. <laughs> You know, by little teeth, but come because on the inside is what you're feeding today. God has created the altars. God forbid that the American churches will take away the altars. No, no, no. Today in this house, there's an altar that's been perfectly designed for you. And the Father waits right here by His Spirit. He's moving. You don't want to leave here. And you've heard preachers say that all the time. You don't want to leave here the same. Well, don't. Travis says it's a choice. What you going to do? You want a little bit or do you want all of it? You want to remain in the wilderness or you want to go into the promised land? So come. Let's pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Juan, is there anything? You okay? You got something to say here? Or you're good? The Lord has said, I have called you by name. You will not leave here alone. I am with you. I have always been with you. I will always be with you. You are mine. You are people called by my name. By my name. The greatest name. My brother, you are called by his name. You are called by the name of the Lord. You look like him. You are meant to walk like him. You are meant to feel what he feels and do what he does. Move with me and I will move with you and I will be with you always until the end of the age.
change now. 